There are no judges in here. No. You're, you, 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 I'm not grading you. I'm here to try to help you. You do the best that you can for your own self-confidence. It's a two-hour class. We, we have some fun. Who wants to go first? Dalton. Nice one, Dalton. 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 Dalton Hertigan. Uh, I was also was interviewing William Anthony Williams over here. Now I wanted to let you guys know why his name he is named twice because he is that nice. <laughs> ah, nice. All right, you guys. You guys, forty five years old doesn't even look it. All right, you guys, young as can be. I mean, the guy you can tell he's from South Carolina. He has that strong accent. He's a hunter, a fisher, and you would never know this, but he grew up on the farm. And he's just a spitting image of his father, like everyone says. No. <laughs> he is. He likes. He, he does farming for fun. He's done it since he's been growing up with his family. He's actually the youngest brother. He has three others. But out of the, all the three, it's usually the oldest that's spitting in image of the father. No, not for William. That's him. And I think that one of the coolest things ever is that he is actually also a pilot. He was a pilot before I was born. I was born in 96, and that's when he got his license. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty interesting, all right? It is a very hard thing to do to get a pilot's license. And the guy already has two planes, and both flies them for fun and for agricultural business. Unbelievable. Now, with this farm, he, it started through his father. And with him, the help of his three sons, his father was able to help expand it all the way across the states. I believe it's in, what, two, three states now? It's, it's unbelievable. You know, for a farming business in the United States, that's one of the hardest businesses to get into. But if you ever want to know something about agricultural business, this would be the guy to speak to. It's, it's definitely William. Now, one of the coolest things ever is why he's here. He's actually going into the livestock business now, and he's also trying to get into, make it, buy his own stockyard. So he definitely has that business perspective in mind on top of the farming and agricultural. I mean, like I said, he's 45, so he's been here for a while, but again, doesn't even look like a day over 30. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Right. Um, oh, another thing, too. You know. Time, though. Oh, uh, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry if I'm making you blush in the back, no, no. man. In closing. Well, in the closing, too. The, the guy is, again, a, a genius in, this, in that side of the business and agricultural. I mean, he's bilingual, too, so he can easily expand his business to other people, too. I mean, in Florida, Spanish is one of the second top languages ever, and for him to be bilingual is going to help him so much when he has a farm in Florida, and it's even going to help him even more when he gets that stockyard auction like he wants. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. Nice. 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 That guy's pretty good, huh? Yes, he is. A lot better than I was saying. Well, guess what? Mr. Two Name. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Young Guy, 45 years old. He's a spring chicken, man. Come on. You're, you're going to come up here and you're going to talk a little bit about Dalton. Just give him a round of applause. He's always helped with auctions with his family, with his brothers and dad. Then he decided he was going to go to college and that didn't work out for him. Said he was kind of bad at math. So he decided he's going to come back and work with the auction business. And his goal is by being here to become an auctioneer and try to auction your cars and help his siblings, I guess, and his father maybe start a company together. I believe he might be a good auctioneer. I just see he's very friendly and outgoing. And that's not all I can do. All right, very good. So you see the differences so far. You have one who spoke almost two minutes. He made it to about 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but he did good. He did good. And everybody, to be able to just be able to get up and to speak, is a challenge. So who wants to have that challenge next? All right, good deal. 
Let's give a round of applause. Come on up. Yeah. I'm Timothy Turner, and I'm so happy to tell you about uh, one of the favorite, my favorite people I've ever shared a table with in this town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. That's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Round I owe you from the top. Yeah, Maria yeah. Martinez. Did I say it right? Hey, yeah. I Very nice. nice. She grew up. Uh, she she did not grow up in the, in this country, but she was born here. She grew up in Greece. Awesome. Uh, in 2001. Uh, she came back to the States, uh, to the States ago, and became a DJ, which she did for about 10 years. Uh, she uh, decided after 10 years, well, let me do something different. So she went to school and, and, uh, and learned about entrepreneurship and thought, ah, oh, this is something interesting. <laughs> and something else interesting happened. She met her husband, her future husband, yeah. who is her husband now, yeah. Stephen. Uh, she started working in a law firm, and um, that was interesting. She'd been in life for a while, but it wasn't. I wasn't getting her too excited, but she was, she was, there's gotta be something else. <laughs> and so she started to teach, she started doing yoga and then decided, I can teach this. So she started teaching yoga. And then she realized, this is a lot of freaking hours. <laughs> I'm not making anything. Hmm. So she started going to different things and she's, she went to an auction and she went, oh, there's other stuff to buy. <laughs> I'm buying stuff. <laughs> so she started awesome. buying stuff. And then she realized she could sell it again and make money off of it. He's awesome. Crap, I can buy a lot more stuff and sell a lot more stuff. So this was a lot more fun than yoga. Um, <laughs> she lives in St. Pete. She loves St. Pete because St. Pete is really growing. There's so many things that she can do. She loves uh, the fact that uh, culture is growing, arts is growing, and there's just many things that she can do, and she just loves being in St. Pete. If you love where, you're, where you are and you love buying and shopping, uh, and yeah. uh, she's right now having a lot of fun. She loves trying different things, and one thing she loves to do if she went to vacation is go to Vegas. She's in Vegas. <laughs> and as we all know, if you go to Vegas, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. She's got stories. <laughs> but she didn't share them because you can't share them. Exactly. So I don't get to hear any of that, but she's got them. Uh, she just recently got back from Vegas because it's like a magnetic pulse that just keeps drawing her back to Vegas. Uh, so, so she enjoys Vegas. Um, if I had to sum her up, um, what's really interesting is that, uh, well, let me not sum her up yet, for, because I do want to tell you about, about, about books. She, like, she likes reading, but only if she can get something from it. So it's kind of something, it's something a do-yourself, a, uh, a do yourself, a do it yourself kind of book where you're learning something new or enhancing yourself, or, or it's got to be something that she can um, learn from. She loves research. She loves figuring out stuff. I think that's what kept her doing the law firm stuff for a bit because it was a, there was a little bit of meat to it. Then she got bored with it and so decided to do something else. What she's proud to be is somebody can jump in different fields and try something new. And today and this week, she's jumping into auctions. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Yeah, you can. Absolutely. Just you don't have to do a good job. Have at it, for real. Come on up here. Come on now. I mean, he's very special. Yes. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That was very interesting. Yeah. 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 yeah, short bus kind of way or men respect. Short bus kind of way or men respect. Short bus. Okay. Yeah, that's a hard one to top. That was, that was, yeah, that's very creative. A lot of creativity. And you know what? Um, oh, by the way, I'm Maria here. And um, I'm introducing Timothy Turner. And yes, like I said, he's very creative. And that's just part of what he does. He's a performer and entertainer. Um, he lives in the Orlando area. And he works in the entertainment industry as a musician, an actor, and anything else that he needs to be at the moment, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, he uh, started singing opera at the age of eight. At the age of eight, that's just amazing. I can't wait to hear him sing. Um, he also, he's an adjudicator. So he's basically judges, pageants, theater, um, anything in the entertainment industry. Another very interesting thing that I learned about Timothy, I'm like, wow, this is 
just crazy. He was in a car accident when he was in high school, and he lost his short-term memory. And that makes him work harder today. It's, it's, a, it's a weakness, but at the same time, it's a strength. And it's just unbelievably amazing. Um, so just a little bit more about his performing and what got him here. Um, he went to Washington and he, um, he, went, he started doing community organizing and thinking and, and working in think tanks in Washington. So he influenced the political uh, arena there and they kind of got tired of it, right? Just mm -hmm. like me, I get tired of it you know, sometimes. Politics. And he's like, I want to go back into performing. So comes back here and gets right back into it. But he wants to add something more to it. And um, auctioneer, that's, that's a performer, that's entertainment. But he also likes to buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> Fill up his house and his three storage units and just <laughs> buy, buy, buy. Um, so performing, buying, what's, what's better than that? Shopping trip to Shopping, Vegas. Shopping, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, let me see if I left anything else out. Yeah, just very talented. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've got some skilled people in here. Not just for the public speaking, but from their backgrounds. Very diverse backgrounds. Uh, it's very interesting. Who wants to go next? We only got two more pairs there. All right, Joe, you all got a break on this one. Yeah? <laughs> they were looking at each other. No. <laughs> all right, Joe Gervin. Yeah. Thank you, Derek, David, classmates. My name is Joe Gervin, here to tell you about a gentleman who obviously is not just devastatingly handsome, but speak to him for a couple of minutes and you get to know that Jeff Allen is Australian. So born and raised in that country. And as he got older, back in the mid-90s, wanted to see the world. So he came to the United States as a camp counselor. While he was there, not only got to know a number of people in the area, but met his wife. Important to note here that his wife was a fellow counselor, not one of the campers. Yeah. Clear on that? Okay, good, good. Yeah. So they fell madly in love. And then as Jeff's trip around the world continued, he went back to the UK. He worked for the same company that recruited him to be a camp counselor in the States. Now it's his turn to bring people overseas. But in addition, he also worked for a silver service catering company and had the opportunity to serve the royal family. Oh, wow. How cool is that? I'm sure he's the only one in the room who can make that claim. <laughs> so now, back to the United States with his lovely wife on a student visa. She finished up her schooling in Gainesville, where Jeff became a rabid fan, as am I, of the Florida Gators. Uh, their journey continued to Knoxville, Tennessee, where his wife Sarah would get her degree um, in dentistry. Right? Uh, veterinary. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, at that time, in Knoxville, as he hated on the balls and loved the Gators. Jeff began working at JTV, Jewelry Television. So began his TV career, or continued his TV career, that is. Uh, and then, after uh, being in Australia for a time, wanted to come back to the States with his wife, with their two children, um, and allow his kids and his wife to be with his in-laws. Um, so they've been able to do that, and also gave Jeff the opportunity to work for the Home Shopping Network. Um, so his television career continued in St. Petersburg, and when that run ended, much like me, he's trying to decide what comes next in life. Uh, so, whether it's the devastatingly handsome looks, the Australian accent, or just the naturally personable guy that he is, Jeff Cowan is your man. All right. <laughs> to give a little overview of what Joe Gervin is all about. From the Home Shopping Network. G'day. You got That's my earring. <laughs> G'day, good morning, or good afternoon. My name's Jeff Cowan, and uh, I'm here to talk about Joe, my main man, Gavan, over here. We've been <laughs> a sportscaster for many years, uh, starting off up in uh, Marlborough, Massachusetts, uh, where he's the eldest of three. Uh, with the came to Marlborough, Massachusetts, it was very cold, and so when it came to university choice, 
there's only one way of, or one direction that was to go south. So he went to the University of Florida, where he arrived with three suitcases. Uh, the University of Florida literally flew down to, to Gainesville Airport, met some Florida students on there, they gave him a ride to campus, dropped him off, and there he stood with his three suitcases. No <laughs> contacts, no nothing, knew what school he was going to be in. His roommate didn't arrive until the night before school started. So, as you'd appreciate, Joe being a pretty switched on guy, moved around campus, he said he pretty much could walk into any place, maybe walked into a couple of sororities, you know, <laughs> <laughs> under me, me, me. <laughs> he, he just walked around, but one thing he did do is he went, he went straight into broadcasting, he was always going to be into broadcasting and sports broadcasting. When he walked around campus, he also walked into an amazing job where he had the opportunity as a student broadcaster to actually go and call games, baseball games, as a student broadcaster, which is unheard of during the actual course of your degree. He was there for four, four and a half years, so he had to stretch out a little bit because it was obviously a college football season at the end of the final season. He then started working. He's worked for basically every network other than CBS. He's worked in Gainesville twice. He's worked in Tampa, West Palm, Fort Myers, uh, and Mobile, Alabama. That's where he's, where he's worked. He's been married for the past two years. In his broadcasting career, not one, not two, but three Super Bowls he's been to. Wow. Also the World Series, Final Falls galore, the guy's done it all. However, right now, as of January 10th, only just last week, the day before my birthday, just said, okay. um, <laughs> his present job came to an end. And so like me, Joe now is on a path a new career and I have no doubt that it'll be a hole in one, an ace and a home run. I can't give you any more bricks. I try to say who wants to go next, but we only have one. We only have one here. Right? They just need to flip the ball. You can't hide from this one. <laughs> Y'all gonna flip a coin or you're gonna go, I'm Michelle? Gonna go. Come on up here. <laughs> Hi, Michelle, how are you? Good, come on. Hey, hello, my I'm name Michelle. is Michelle, and I'm here to introduce to you the beautiful Jeannie Moran. Jeannie is from Bradenton, and uh, she moved to Tampa when she was two years old. Her father got a job there. She has three children Travis, Brittany, and Timothy. Uh, she's been a realtor for three years, and um, she decided to go into auctioneering because she wanted to find a different uh, endeavor within the real estate career. But it's not just that. She's incredible. She's been a paralegal for 20 years. Um, she also is a CPR instructor. She runs a clothing closet uh, out of her office where she don't, donates clothes, and she also gives free legal help to those who need it. So she's she's amazing, and uh, she also has a real estate empire. She owns ten properties, so that's pretty incredible. Um, she also last week got her mortgage loan originator course, or she she took it, she did it. So I mean, look at her. She's she's beautiful. She's amazing. She can do it all. Jeannie Moore. Thank you very much. And last, but certainly not least, the amazing <laughs> Jean Moran. Hi. Hello. Hello. I'm a student here, and Joanne, and I'm here to induce Michelle Torres. She is an awesome, amazing woman. She, was, uh, she lives in Miami. She's lived in Miami all her life. Uh, she has one son, 16 years old, who she dearly loves with all her heart. I mean, it, when he gets a, a shot, she has he has to hold her hand <laughs> because she's gonna hurt for him. You know how, how sweet is that? You know, um, she has been a realtor for seven months. Um, let's go let's go back a little bit. She worked at one of my favorite stores, Tiffany's. Um, at Tiffany's, she uh, she was sells and sells. She uh, worked also with jewelry jewelry. Um, she was there for eight years and seeing a point where she could not go any farther. So, you know, just like myself, I don't like to be, you know, I, I like to keep going higher and higher. And she's a lot like me. So um, she decided to um, go into real estate 
when she went into real estate, she found that there was a lot of realtors, mostly everybody's a realtor. So she wanted to have an edge up and uh, you know, make more money as well. And uh, she decided to um, she decided to come to the auction school as we are. Uh, she's enjoying it. Um, she's uh, she's a good, open-minded person. Very funny. She's making me laugh now. Uh, <laughs> um, she she's she's gone to hold to do what she can in the real estate business. She likes real estate. Um, she likes life and living it. And she's having fun here in Point St. Lucie. All right. All right. Thank you. That gets the butterflies out. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> and I'm so nervous until I sit down. <laughs> that, that gets the butterflies out. That gives everybody a chance to, one, some really interesting stories. Yeah. To hear about people. Yeah. You know, sportscasters and yeah. Tiffany's and I was a DJ for five years. Oh, my God. We had DJ in the family here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it's just an amazing thing <laughs> to hear people come up, and, and I do have comments and notes on each one of you, but I am going to give you some immediate feedback on your introduction. Well, Dalton was really good. He got up here, he was the first guy to start speaking. He had humor, he had a personality, he, he, he kind of stood aside, and that really made a difference. He talked for about a minute, 45 seconds, was good, so you kept on going. I listen for certain things in speaking which are crutch words, which means that when you run out of something to say, you start saying things like, um, uh, oh, well, horrible. uh, so, yeah. well, well, yeah, some of y'all had like 20 of them in like less than a minute. Oh. So that means like every five seconds y'all were saying, uh, well, and you don't even realize that you're saying that. When you start catching it and you start watching for it, when you start seeing it on TV or you listen to a politician speaking or somebody giving an interview and every other sentence is, uh, well, um, yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, you'll start to get on your nerves. You're like, why does that type person take Derek's public speaking class? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they will learn not to it. He had a, double, a couple of what they call double clutches when you go, um, um, or you double clutch on a word, you say, and, and uh, uh, things of that nature. So those are the things that you want to try to catch and not say. William made it to 45 minutes. I mean, 45 seconds. 45 minutes. He, that was good. <laughs> nice. He, he, he made nice. it to 45 seconds. The shortest one that I've had was 20 seconds, which they got up, said the person's name, nice person, sat down, and that was it. But he said that he was not a great public speaker, but I couldn't catch anything that he said. I mean, it's only because he talked for 45 seconds. Didn't give me a whole lot of time to catch it, but your enunciation was good. You, are, you have a strong accent, so you just have to talk a little slower because those of us who are not Southern may get caught up in the draw. You know, so you have an accent, I have a New York accent, everybody has their own yeah. accent that they have to work with. So that would be the only thing that I share with you is to just be careful and to make sure that you talk slow. Timothy, mm -hmm. you're a pretty, pretty funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best thing about you was your animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were like animated. You were laughing and mm -hmm. you were joking and you were talking about her. You were making stuff up. <laughs> 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 and and it was really good. As you were speaking though, 5, 10, 15, 20, 21 ums and ahs as okay. you were speaking. Okay. And you don't even realize it. But you were talking, and uh, and, I, and she even has, uh, she does this, and uh, and every other transition in your sentences, you were throwing out a uh, or an and, or a so. And you want to try to have your transitions be smooth. If you can't think of anything to say, don't say anything. Don't throw a crutch in there. Don't throw a clutch in there. Just stop for a second and go right to your next sentence. So you did really, really good. Maria, you were very smooth. You were very good with your eye contact. You said that you were a DJ and you can hear it in your voice. I also listened for inflection, for voice tonality, for going up and going down, 
going up and going down. And you have to be able to take your audience on a ride. And you did very good with that. But you also had 5, 10, 15, 17 ums and ahs. You're, you're um and away. <laughs> so between you and Timothy, you're about 45. <laughs> but you guys were funny. <laughs> you, you, you were really good. Joe, we can tell that you are a speaker. You've done this before. You had really good <coughs> hand motion. You know, one of the things, you had good hand motion and eye motion. I'm mean, not eye motion, eye contact. When you're up on stage speaking, you want to have, some people just like this talking and hands are all over them. You want to have purposeful hand motion. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to Janine, I want to make sure that I'm purposely moving in that direction and not just having my hands just all flagging all over the place. You want to make sure that you're making proper eye contact and looking at the person and that you're talking to the audience. The reason when I came in here, I kind of joked with everybody and I was talking with you and chit-chatting a little bit, so that way when I get up on stage or I'm in front of people, I feel like I know you already. Mm -hmm. And it makes me more comfortable when I say, yeah, I just saw you at 7-Eleven over there. <laughs> and it makes me feel, we're old friends. So it's, it makes it much better if you get to a meeting early, if you're doing a speech, if you're doing an auction, and you get and mingle around with the people so they get to know who you are, even for 50 seconds, 30 seconds. It makes a huge difference when you're doing that. So Joe, you had really good voice inflection, you had good hand motions, and you had 10 ums and ahs, which you don't realize again until you see it on tape, or you have somebody like me who's checking them off and counting them. And Jeffrey, you did really good, again, smooth, good humor, good voice inflection, I didn't catch any ums and any ahs. I didn't have anything negative or for positive improvement other than just keep doing what you're doing. Absolutely. That was really good. Nice. Michelle? Ah. <laughs> you didn't do too bad. You had five ums and ahs. You gave a really good overview of Janine. You were a little short. You took about a minute. You didn't go on and on and on and talk, which is okay. You made good eye contact. Your voice was a little soft at times. You want to make sure that you speak from, this, your, what they, from your diaphragm up and be able to project out into the area, but a lot of times now everybody has microphones, so they really don't have to worry about it. I don't need a microphone. The, the other camera off. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> was it, it went off? Yeah, yeah that's good. That's it's got fine. enough of me talking. <laughs> <laughs> and your eye contact was good, and your voice was good. So just a little bit more volume, and cut out those ums and ahs. And Janine? Jeannie. 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 15 ums and ahs. A little bit more than what I'd like to see. But that is just from nervousness, usually. And you're really not nervous. You're up here speaking, but when you are put with a challenge in introducing somebody who you just met, and you got to stand up in front of a room, you're like, uh, well, um, and oh, Michelle is uh, really a sweet person, and uh, she's really, and yeah. that just comes out naturally. 